Hey, and welcome to the highlights of episode number 89 with Coot Blackson. Some of my favorite parts of this episode were when he shares about why we are here on earth, which is to be of service. I love when he talks about the importance of creating space to listen to our soul. And I love when he shares about the power of forgiveness and taking radical responsibility in our own life for our freedom and happiness. But there is so much more wisdom and inspiration that you get in the full episode. So to listen to the full podcast and to get all the info in the show notes, head to melissaambrosini.com forward slash 89 right now. Coot, welcome to the show. I am so excited for this conversation with you. And tell us the story of how you got to where you are today and doing the work that you're now doing. I was born in Ghana, West Africa. My father's from Ghana. My mother's from Japan. I grew up in London. I currently live in the US, so I feel like a citizen of the world. People often ask me, where are you from and how do you get started? And, you know, honestly, sometimes I don't know. It just depends how I feel given the day, that, that, given the day I might wake up. And so from a very young age, I always felt a profound calling. I remember being age five and I felt this burning, unexplainable desire to impact people's lives. I remember being age five, six as a you know chubby little kid in, in London. And I just wanted to, to, to help people. I felt I was so sensitive and I remember feeling people suffering. And I, there was a part of me that just wanted to alleviate people's suffering. I didn't quite know what that was going to look like. But I remember being around six and seven in that zone. Literally, I was a chubby kid lost in the crowd at this moment. Also, going back to Ghana, in Ghana, West Africa, where I was born. I'll never forget one day when I saw this crippled woman crawling on the floor and she picks up the sand that this man walks on, wipes it on her face and stands up. And you could call that a miracle. You know, I mean, I I saw this with my own eyes. It wasn't something I saw on television. And so week after week, I grew up seeing the same man who sand she picked up, literally look at a woman in a wheelchair and say, stand up. Why are you in this wheelchair? You're not sick. Stand up. Do you believe? And this woman would say, well, I'm sick. I haven't walked in years. And he would say, stand up. And boom. This person would stand up. Week after week, I grew up seeing miracles, blind people seeing, deaf people hearing, uh, people standing up at wheelchairs, people being cured of cancer and all sorts of incurable diseases. This man was my father, and my father built about 300 churches in Ghana, West Africa, a huge church in London. He was considered, considered like a miracle man and a really incredible figure. And so I grew up in this, you could say, strange, different environment. But for me as a young boy, it was it was very normal. And so, you know, from a very young age, I, I literally started to speak in my father's churches when I was age eight, thrown in the audience one Sunday. And I, I'll never forget being an eight-year-old kid. I just wanted to play soccer, you know, and soccer in the lobby of my father's church. And I was grabbed, put on the front row. And one Sunday, my father said, son, you're giving the sermon. And I was thrown on stage. And that's, you could say, when my speaking career began, had no idea what I was going to say, but words just started flying out of my mouth. And around age 14, I was ordained as a minister. I was given a mandate to take over my father's ministry. But I remember being around age eight. That's when I read my first self-help book, a book by a woman called Shekhti Gawain. It was called The Creative Visualization. This book really shifted my paradigm, shifted my perception, really opened uh, my consciousness to a new way of thinking. Like, wow, you mean my energy and my thoughts can affect my reality? And so for an eight-year-old, it was just, it was like a, a wild epiphany occurred for me, a huge uh, shift in my consciousness. And so from around age eight, I became obsessed with trying to understand the human condition, the human nature. People often ask me, what what keeps us stuck? What what keeps people blocked? You know, how can I, where can people start? I think one of the first places that we can start that actually keeps us stuck are all the ways that we lie to ourselves, all the ways that we bullshit ourselves, all the ways that we don't tell the truth to ourselves. Maybe we're in a job that we hate. Maybe we're in a relationship that we know is not right for us, but we're simply in this relationship because you know, what will people say or just expectations of people or society or we're afraid to to hurt someone. And so and many times we're, we're afraid of the consequences. And I see so many of us, we play this game, this game that sounds something like, well, I, I'm not sure. You know, I, I don't know. I, I'm confused when deep down there is a part of us that knows everything because at that deepest level, we are connected to everything. And I think to truly yeah, become powerful, to truly become uh, the great ones that we are all destined to become, we must be willing to 
to tell the truth. So I always say happiness is quite simple, not always easy, but it's simple. Feel the truth, own the truth, breathe the truth, acknowledge the truth, live the truth, happy life, end the story. You know, there's a couple of questions I asked myself growing up. I continue to ask myself now that has really impacted my life. And that's number one, what are the lies that I'm telling myself? So I would ask, invite everyone listening in, like, what are the lies that you're telling yourself? What lies are you telling yourself currently right now? To me, the truth will set you free. It might first piss you off. Yes. And by telling the truth and owning the truth, you might lose people in your life. When I told the truth and I had the conversation with my father, we didn't speak for two years. But I realized if I was going to live a lie, I was going to have to live a lie for the rest of my life in order to get his and everyone else's love. And what I found was nothing is worth compromising my soul. Nothing and no one is worth your freedom. And so what lies are you telling yourself? You know, what, what are you pretending to not know? And the other question I would invite people to ask is like, what is it costing you? What is it costing me to tell the lies? What is it costing me? I think it costs us so much. And many times we feel the pain of the lie. We feel the pain of our incongruence. And because we're afraid of, uh oh, what, what, what might that mean for our lives? We, we avoid, we busy ourselves, we eat it away, we social media it away. And I think it's so important that we allow ourselves to be still and listen to the voice inside and allow ourselves to be guided so that we can create a truly authentic life. I remember one day sitting in, a, in my tiny apartment and uh, feeling like a victim. And I just literally heard this. It was like a, an explosion inside. I heard this voice that said, no one owes you anything. God doesn't owe you anything. Your father doesn't owe you anything. He's given you life. God, the universe has given you everything you need. And so in that moment, I remember there was a shift that happened. I decided to take real, just full responsibility and went through a process of forgiving my father. And, you know, it's been, a, it's been a beautiful journey with him ever since. I mean, literally, once I forgave him, there was such freedom. So for someone listening and they having this realization now and they're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm lying to myself about a relationship or I'm lying to myself about a job. What are some things that people can do to take action to move through that? Like, What are some strategies or tips to really help them move through that if they've had that realization that, holy crap, I'm lying to myself about this relationship or this job? Yeah, I think the first step is to tell yourself the truth and acknowledge that you're lying because many times we're in denial where we don't even know I am lying and we just so, so, we're just so bullshitting ourselves because there's an investment we have in staying stuck. So I think step one, we have to have the radical, takes courage, the radical courage to say, you know what, I want truth more than I want what I have. I want truth more than I want this relationship. I want the truth and I want to live a life of truth. And we have to be willing to have the courage, the courage to acknowledge step one that, you know what, I am lying. And to, and then that's the first thing. And to begin telling ourselves, to begin listing to ourselves all of the lies that we have been spinning and telling and the stories that we've been telling ourselves, just call ourselves on it and confess it to ourselves and confess it to those around us in our circle that are close to us. So we have a witness. So that's, that's one thing I'll say, the acknowledgement and the confession of the lie. The second thing is to actually feel. It's not even then just, oh, let me just take action. Because if you just take action without actually letting the lie digest, Oftentimes you'll go back and circle around it. So to really ask yourself to, to be willing to feel what is the cost? What is, what is this like costing me? And to feel the pain, the pain of the lie, the impact. Because if you feel the impact of the lie, likely the pain of this lie will, will burn like a fire. And if you allow the fire of this lie burn, it will imprint itself in your consciousness that hopefully will make it much more difficult or impossible for you to just do it again and to not numb yourself from the impact of the lie. Many times we're like, ah, it's no big deal. Yeah, it's okay. We rationalize and we, we, we disconnect from how painful it really is, which allows us to perpetuate the lie, either the lie we're living or perpetuate the light again in the future. So to actually, I say, burn in the fire of the truth, burn in the fire of the light, let it burn you up in a good way from the inside to make it impossible for you to just 
to, to feel the impact of what it's costing you and let it, it touch your heart. Let it impact you and allow yourself to feel the feelings. There might be sadness. There might be tears. There might be grief. There might be anger. To not run from that, to not numb that, but to feel it and let that uh, really digest. Then from that place, sometimes, you know, sometimes people, once they acknowledge the, 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 the truth and feel it, it's so scary. They're not willing to do anything about it yet. So I say, look, even if you're not willing to take action, just tell the truth and feel the impact. Okay. I hate my job. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm in a relationship that is loveless, that is not aligned. It's painful. My needs aren't met, but to feel, to actually then feel the pain, even if you don't take action, but acknowledge the truth. And the truth might be, I hate my job. It's not aligned. It's painful. It's killing me. But I'm not ready to do anything about it right now. So we don't bullshit ourselves with, well, I don't know. I'm, no, no. I know it's not aligned and I'm not ready to do anything about it right now because I'm too scared. And to let that burn, to let ourselves feel that because what I have found without judgment, without judging yourself like, well, I should or I shouldn't. If you're willing to just rest in that deeper level of truth, which might be, I'm, I'm, I'm too afraid to take action right now. If you sit with that over time, it's only a matter of time. The truth will start to burn inside of you. And over time, you will be moved into action as you let yourself feel the truth. Because deep down, we know, we absolutely know what we need to do. I think it's also important that we create the spaces in our life that, so that we can actually hear and listen and connect without knowing. When we actually allow ourselves those spaces, and sometimes we're afraid to allow ourselves the stillness in life, and we busy our life with so much action. So I would say, stop running around, stop the busy, the busy, the business of busyness and become still. Cultivate spaces and stillness in your life so you can listen to yourself without distraction. So much of our culture is distracting us. Media is distracting you. Media, it's like social media and 5,000 TV channels and radio stations and we're bombarded. We're constantly being distracted by the media so that because the moment we can be distracted, we get distracted from ourselves. We get disconnected from ourselves. As a result, we end up sort of like uh, misaligned or depressed and then we can be sold a bunch of stuff. The greatest lie that we are sold, you could say well, one of the greatest lies that we're constantly being sold that we, we often buy into individually and collectively is this lie of who you are is not enough. We're sold this lie constantly by the media. Go to a magazine stand, you see an image of what beauty is, an image of what success is. Who you are is not enough. You're not enough. You're not enough. You're not enough. But if you just, if you just, you know, wear these socks and Wear this underwear, drink this beer, drive this car, wear this what? Then you'll finally be enough. And that's the greatest lie that you aren't enough when the truth is at the core, who you are, who I am, who we are is whole, perfect, and complete. So allow yourself to be still, listen, tune in, and, and hear your truth. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning uh, is just connect with myself, connect with my body. I bless my body. The first, the first thing I... Before you, I reach for the phone or anything like that. I just simply connect with my body and I just say, thank you. Just thank you. Thank you to my body, to the universe, to the divine, to life. And just the moment of connection sets up my day, you know? And for me, one thing that sounds simple, it's obvious, but the one thing I do in the morning is just I, I exercise. I do something physical every morning that makes a huge, huge difference in terms of creating space. And I think, uh, you know, when you let everything else, when you let the life revolve around what's really important and you make yourself important, you, you put yourself first, so to speak, then I think it shifts your relationship with life where you're not just simply reacting to the moment. Then, you know, you, you allow yourself to get truly centered to your core. Then you're able to engage life in a whole different way. I would have to say that for me, my success has been and is in proportion to my level of surrender. And by surrender, I'm not talking about giving up. I'm not even talking about being passive, but the degree to which I have over time consistently been able to get myself, my small self, my little mind, my ego self out of the way 
the degree to which I've been able to surrender myself to life and allow myself to trust the flow, to trust life and allow myself to be lived by life, the degree to which I do that, the freer I have become, the more you could say successful I have become. You know, for the longest time, I have grown up and still am, honestly. It's a blessing and a curse where I'm, uh, I'm someone that gives to people. And sometimes I just keep giving. And sometimes I don't know when to stop giving. And I don't know when to allow myself to receive. So for the longest time, it's been easier for me just to give uh, than to receive. And so to really allow myself to be given to, to allow people to support me, to allow you know, uh, especially friends, you know, especially those close to me. I just want to take, you know, I'm a caretaker. I just want to take care of people. So uh, one one of my growing edges is to really uh, just say, you know what, I, I don't have to like save this person. I don't have to like be over responsible to allow myself to just think, you know what, it's okay for me to receive, you know. And what I found too in that process um, is uh, sometimes being over responsible for people and giving too much doesn't really serve them. Uh, being over responsible, giving too much, it, it actually robs, has robbed people in my life from really uh, stepping up to the next level themselves, has robbed them of their own growth and evolution because I was so eager to save them, to do it for them, to make it okay for them, to help them grow, to help them evolve. And sometimes what I had to realize is, you know, everyone has their own path. Everyone has their own journey. I don't always know what that person's journey should be. Maybe I might see something they don't see. Maybe I might have a higher perspective. But the fact is, they have their own journey. So I've had to really uh, trust each person's soul journey and learn to honor every single person's soul journey. 